Has Legend Story Studios perfected Marvels here in Outsiders? That's what we're talking about today. We are still looking for a Marvel here on Master Set Madness. This is case six, case number six, and we have not seen any Marvels. Where are the Marvels? Where are the Marvels? That's a question I asked way back in Uprising. Where are they? Here I know where they are. They're hiding. There's only three of them. They are hard to find. We're going to find them. We are going to find them as again. This is Master Set Madness. We are on the quest to complete a complete, to open a complete Master Set, one of every single card in every single variation that you can get from a pack. And yes, we have the wild, there's our first Majestic, we have the wild idea that maybe, maybe we could do it by Case 19. We've got the Case 19 challenge going on. And as I've told many of you, if you've heard before, you've heard it. Make sure you punch that subscribe button because if I do get it by Case 19, which we're getting there, we're not too far off. I mean, we're kind of far, but we're not too far off since we got 13 more after this one. If I get it by Case 19, I'm gonna begin giving out Case number 20 to one of my subscribers of this channel. So make sure you punch that subscription because it's fun and it's a free way for you to have an opportunity of getting a free case. All you gotta do is put on the gillet, punch the subscribe button, and you're done. And maybe you get it. Why not join the journey? Why not join the journey? Anyways, here we are, we're case six. We're gonna be talking Marvels today. Marvels, Marvels, Marvels. Hopefully we get one. Hopefully we can find one. I would love to show you one. I know you've seen them in all other bunch of other places, but I'd love to show you one here. And I'd love to see one in person because my assumption is that pictures and videos do not do them justice. They do, they look beautiful. But beyond looking cool, what should a Marvel do, right? What is, what's the purpose of it? And I guess kind of answering the question, are they perfected? really depends on like, what, what's the goal of a Marvel? What is a Marvel trying to do within a flesh and blood set? Like it's, it's trying to do something. Um, and of course it's trying to look cool. But is that all it's trying to do, Mask of Many Faces, on that one? So from my perspective, at least what I can tell, Marvels they kind of do two things, right? So they offer collectors a chance to chase something. I think that's pretty clear. It's like this big way for you to go and find the big, awesome, hard to get, extra rare card. So it's there for collectors. At the same time, I think another goal with it and of course, if you're not a collector, it's, you, know, you want it. It's fun to open that too. Like you're not gonna complain, obviously. But I think for players, actually, one of the purposes is that the Marvels actually push down the price on a bunch of other cards in the set that people want to play with. So in a way, kind of stab wound there. In a way there, it pleases both the collector and the player who doesn't have a lot of money or want to collect anything and just wants to play their on that side where the whole money aspect is just kind of a barrier to playing anyways. Like whether they can or can't afford it, they just would rather just get the cards and play and not worry about the market side. I think Marvels kind of help both people. And the Marvels definitely, like they affect prices. I think they affect them for both, both collectors and players. So look at this, let's pause for a second. That's a little disappointing. Like it's obviously, plunge here is not the worst card to have that on, but it's not exactly what you want to see as your opening cards. Maybe I'm even going to throw that to the side so we don't accidentally put that in a set for somebody or something and they think they're getting all this neat stuff, clean stuff. Get that in there by accident. Anyway, so back to like we've talked about a few episodes ago within this series. The MinMax games, they had that 500 box opening. And within that, they got 13 of the marbles. So 13 cold foil marbles, about one in every 38 and a half boxes, which is hard to get, which is probably why we haven't got one yet here on case six. Case six, I hope we get one before box 38 though. That would be nice. That would definitely be nice. So they're rare. And they're so rare that it's, you look at it and you think, how do I actually, if you, if you buy it, your store, you open it, the question is, how do you price it, 
right? Where do you put the price on this card that's so ridiculously rare? Silver Wind Shuriken. But it's also like a lot of the value in there is just because it's rare. Right? It's not because people need it to play. There are two versions below it with a normal and then a rainbow foil version. So people don't actually need the card. People just want it. But it gets so rare, like of course you don't want to get too too low on it. And you can do like you could do fancy calculations to try and figure that out. Shake down. And I'm sure there are people who are smarter than me who would be able to do all sorts of great, well, based on how many majestics and cold foils and rainbow foils and fabled's and all that jazz from big box openings, they could figure out a marble should be priced about right here. But even if you can do that, like even if you do do that, it doesn't mean that anybody's going to agree with you, right? It doesn't mean that people are going to say, yep, I want to pay that much. Gorgeous foils. Gorgeous foils. You can collect the commons and have fun time collecting those. The last pack here in box one. And I say that with the, you know, the price thing because so much of price, so much of price is just perception, especially on those really, really big cards really big marvels where it really the art and the rarity is where the value is right that's where the value is because you can get a cheaper version if you're looking to play and speaking of like value and variance there you go there's box one same thing happened last time we had a rough box one there is nothing amazing in here you're not going to feel super great if this is the one box you buy um, i'm sorry it's all over the place. It's all over the place. And so a lot of that price is, is perception. And with marbles, it's tricky because there's not a whole lot of history, Codex of Inertia, for you to compare things to. And the marbles, they differ so much from set to set that you look at it and you're like, well, the marbles in the last set cost this, but these marbles are, they're not the same class of card. They're not the same type of card. They're harder to get than the previous ones were, except for some of them, like the Emperor. And then you can, I mean, you can compare it to a dragon, but it's not, they're just not the same, right? Like you put them next to each other and they feel totally different. They feel totally, totally different. So I don't know, that's, that's a really thing, a really tricky thing, figuring out price. Because a lot of people, right? A lot of people are looking at the value of previous ones and then trying to make some calculation but for each person they have their own perception of well these ones should be more or they should be less because they don't have that same look or maybe they like dragons and they think of oh, dragons look amazing that one should be more who knows there's so many things in there and eventually when people's perception meets together that's where you have that whole supply and demand sit so in my mind, uh, perception is, is a way, it's just a different way kind of talking about supply and demand. Uh, a way that's talking about it that's not specifically directly relating to exactly how many are out there and exactly how many people want. But it's the idea that once people see a price that they perceive to be too low, they'll often buy in if they can. And if they perceive the price is too high, they're gonna send them wait. I don't know, potato, 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 potato. Just a different way of thinking about it. An amplifying arrow with a backstab, toxicity. Interesting, interesting. And so with all that and all that conversation, you know, some people, some people ask like, does that actually change? Like, do, does that price from the Marvels pull from not does it pull from other cards. I think I think it's pretty clear that it, it does because as people chase the marbles, as people, collectors go for that, they open more boxes. They get more amplifying arrows that they don't want because they don't need 50 of them for that one or two marbles they found. And then they got to move them and then there's too much supply. And you know, you get that whole side of things, right? So does it help players? I think the answer is yes. Like it, like Marvel's putting them in there really helps players. And it's a, it's an interesting thing that Alice has done here with how they're, you know, trying to keep track of 
managing that idea where you keep it super fun for collectors and super reasonable for players who just want to play. I think it works. I think it's working relatively well. Um, minus the whole variance conversation. And if you're interested in the variance conversation, and you didn't see it, that's the last video. So I don't want to talk too much about, I don't want to talk too much about that. I don't want to go in that direction. And so I, I wonder here. So as we look at these very expensive cards, again, I'm, I'm doing this on Sunday night, so who knows, sorry if things have changed in a couple of days before I post this. But the Marvel prices, they've already kind of dropped a significant amount from the first day, which yeah, it's completely normal. It's completely normal and expected, which of course I always feel a little bit bad for the people who, who jump on it on day one or pre-day one. I mean, if it, and if they get it at the right price and it goes up, awesome. It works for them. In general, it doesn't. But you have these cards, they're really rare. You've got plenty of versions you can play beneath it. So like what, you know, how, how well can they actually hold value in the long term? How cool does the card have to look? How good does the card have to be as far as like actually being something people play about, care about? How rare does it have to be? for it to, to maintain that, because the rarity, right, it's kind of this artificial scarcity. You know, it's not like they had so, there were so many of these, these marvels printed, and then people just kind of went, went wild and lost them all. It's the second common cold foil. We're back to case one. And then over time, there just weren't, there weren't enough because there was so much demand for these marvels. No, like that's not really the case, right? It's more that there are so few of them that it doesn't take a lot of demand to make it expensive. If there's only 20 available in the whole market at a time and 21 people want it, or not even 21, whatever, a small amount of people want it, like it can move very quickly. So it's, I don't know, it's just an interesting question. I think for me, one of the, I don't know, kind of interesting things of, of looking back on, obviously not the same thing, but looking back on like the Kaladesh inventions from Magic, which was far too long ago. <laughs> In my mind, it feels like it was just yesterday. Whoa. And we're actually, I opened one of those. That's the second one of those. Here in this, that's not, that is not exciting duplication. That is not the duplication you want in a case. And those inventions, like I remember I opened one of them and I, I made the foolish decision of trading it. I didn't know any better at the time. But even then, like even if I'd kept it, the value of that particular one I bought, I checked it the other day and it's basically the same after what, how many years is it? Six, seven, I don't know. Can't keep track. Track years, which for a magic card is pretty good, right? For a lot of magic cards, just maintaining the price is pretty good if you can do that. But that's not like your, I don't think your average collector, your average collector has a little bit of that investor side in them too, right? And so they're not super excited about the idea of think in general I'm gonna buy a card for three hundred dollars in seven years it's gonna be exactly three hundred dollars still in the market and then I'm gonna lose a little bit when I try and sell it I don't know if that's really the goal and so what do you like what do you have to do to make that not just maintain but actually go up a little bit in that kind of a time period I don't know because just art alone like you look again look at the invention things there are a few that are very high and very valuable. Usually those are the ones that are the most playable because you can look back at the art on them and some of the cheaper ones have really awesome art. But they were a card that was great in Kaladesh, but uh, kind of not so great after Kaladesh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So playability definitely does have a factor in there. That perception. 
people, if yeah, sometimes people just want to put the big bling in a deck. And when there's so few of a card out there, even if 40 people want to put those in a deck, that and they got to put three of them in a deck or four, that pulls a lot of the supply. Pulls a lot of the supply out of the system. So, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think it'll be really interesting to watch what happens here with these marbles in this set. And of course, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do in the next set. I made a video a while back kind of talking about a little nervous about... Nervous is not the right word, but being cautious about the idea of getting too many different art styles and variations and versions and no i'm not like super worried about it or have this feeling that we're gonna get anywhere close to how magic has variations but i don't know it's just like there's that little part of me that's like let's try and keep things a little bit slower here like give me let's just just give me a quiver a big full marvel quiver it's the same image i don't care if you do anything new to it but it's full art it's cold foil looks amazing double side it do something wild like that oh like to me honestly i'd just be totally fine with marvels being like that just kind of like the dragons are it's the same thing but you make full art it's all over the place like i don't need the totally fancy totally fancy totally fancy different design on every single one their new set and i don't know it looks super cool but I'm still like Soraya. Oh, Soraya looks so good. That Marvel is a beautiful Marvel. Like, again, obviously playability has some, some factors in it. The old Command and Conquerors, they've been having a little wild ride. Vista Cuffs. Nothing. Look at this. Look at this case, you guys. Oh, man. I said I don't want to talk about variants. Oof. But like you got that fabled uh, Command and Conquer, and to me it's basically a Marvel, right? It's, it's just, a, I don't know why it's in Fable slot. Personally, it just feels like a Marvel. Just different art on a card that's already been out, so. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it is, but like you look at that, and it, to me it's really the playability which pushes that card up along with the rarity. Because, uh, oof, Soraya looks, oh, she looks so good. Such a gorgeous card. Such a gorgeous card. And if you're paying just an art, for me personally, I'd go with Soraya. Um, but that's me. It's art. It's just good everywhere. It's good on the commons. It's good on the rares. It's good on everything above. It's good on all of them. It's good on all of them. So all that to say, like, I don't know. It's hard to say if they've perfected them. It is, like... In, in one sense, it is nice that they're super rare in Outsiders. In another sense, like, it was really fun. Oh my goodness, that's our third common cold foil second gillet. Wow, we're getting the other end of it here. We're getting the other end of it here. We got too many good ones in that one case. Too many good ones there. It is sad, though, not seeing any marbles. Like you kind of get used to the idea from Uprising that ooh, we're going to get marbles all over the place and then now it's just been swapped around. I think if you, again, don't have that perception from Uprising for kind of how often you're going to marvel, like it's a different feel then. Here it wouldn't feel so, so sad. Melting point. That was the last pack of that box. We snuck out that Rainbow Foil Majestic. But whoa, we're not sneaking out anything else good. This might be... This might be the zero dollar box. It may not be zero dollars at the moment because some of those Majestics, they're still holding things. Uh, melting Point and even the Rainbow Foils, they're holding better than I thought they might at the start. Check back in a month. Check back in a month and these three boxes do not look very good. I do not think. Check back in three months and Unless somebody's got something super playable in that pile that I'm forgetting about. Yeesh. Yeesh, yeesh, yeesh. That's what I gotta say. That's what they gotta say. So, I mean, this is... Wow, look at that Case 19 challenge. We're just rocking it for that. <laughs> 
we are rocking it for that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let me know what you guys think about Marvels. Let me know if you like the changes here for Outsiders. If you are excited that there's only three and the chase is a little bit more exciting. Are you disappointed that there's only three so that your average player is just not going to get them nearly as much as you could have? Uh, for like an uprising, a dragon, like you got a pretty good chance of getting a dragon. Marvel. Here you do not have a very good chance of getting any marvels. Premeditate, that's that's the saving card of this case. I mean, it's not anywhere near what you need to save this case, but it's a start. It's a glimmer of hope here in box number four. Now, some of you, you have asked me if I have a place where I sell these cards. I do sell the cards. I mostly sell the cards <laughs> that I don't need for the master set. Some cards, eh, just, they're harder to let go, but I do sell most of them. And I sell, I sell a lot of them on TCG Player, sometimes on Facebook or different things. So I do have now in the video description, I got a link to my TCG Player store. If you want to check that out, I really appreciate the support of anybody who purchases anything from there, because that helps me keep going, right? That helps me make more content, helps me get farther in Master Set Madness. That's what it allows me to do. And uh, of course, I appreciate that. So if you want to check that out, you can. I don't have, I may not have when you look all the outsider stuff available there because again, I got to keep some of it for my set and especially cards that are not cards you want to lose because you may not ever see them again. I can't, I can't post it in the hopes that I get a second one later. But for cards that have duplicates of that are not quivers, <laughs> quivers, old quiver count, no bonuses on that one for here. And you can probably find them in my store if they're not there. They're probably already sold out. So, appreciate the support. I appreciate, appreciate that you guys even ask where you can support me because uh, it means a lot. Uh, whether that's going on TCG player, TCG player and buying some cards or if that just means going down there, punching that subscribe button, hitting the like button, leaving a kind comment, leaving a comment that's just a comment or going over to Patreon supporting there so you can get the tracker and keep track of everything that's going on here because you're a statistic person and you like seeing that stuff. Whatever you do, I appreciate you and just appreciate that you're watching and enjoying it and I hope you're having fun with the series. I really do hope to get a Marvel and I really do hope we finish this by case 19 so that I can send one of you, barbed undertow, send one of you a case. Oof, that's not what we want to see. That is not what we want to see. We got half of a box left here. I'm not going to do the price check. Again, it's just the price checks, it's so, it varies so much now. And by the time I post this, the prices are not going to be the same as when I'm recording it. So I'm not going to do the price check here. If you want, if you really, really want to see the price check like now, then you got to go over to Patreon because I will have that all plugged in there in that chart. Uh, otherwise, I will be bringing back the price checks at the end of the videos very soon, very soon. I don't know. I guess we'll see how fast it seems like the market is cooling down or slowing down and change. Then we'll start doing price checks again. And that's when, probably close to that time is when we'll be having the list on the side of the sheet right now. There are so many cards we need. There are so many different marvels and majestic cold foils and all that jazz that we just don't have yet. And majestic rainbow foils that we don't have yet. That it's too early for the list. Because even in Dynasty, all oh, those burdens of the past, we've got, we've seen you before. Even in Dynasty, I did it with like 19 cards on the side. And I was like, oh, <laughs> card list overload. So this is overload gaming, but I don't want to overload you on every video that you watch. Last pack, last pack. This feels like a box of dis, case of dishonor, doesn't it? We're not going to slow down here for this pack. We'll just open it up. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. They are not all good, my friends. They are not all good. They are not all good. We've got that premeditate. 
but uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, premeditated, but not much else. I mean, yeah, right now there's a couple cards in there that are maybe 5, 6, something. But I'm not super excited that they're going to stay there. Melting Point, of course, looks really cool. Burdens of the Past is a fun card. And then these these look great, but they're not they're not high rollers. Again, it's not a zero box right now. I think those first three that don't have the premeditate could be pretty close in a couple months. Anyways, thanks for watching. You guys are amazing. Come back for episode seven. If you haven't seen the ones before this, go back and watch them because it's a series and you get more out of the series when you do it. And the more views I get, the more videos I can make, right? The more videos I can make. And uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. We'll see you later. Peace out. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon, whatever you're doing.